Welcome to Majesty Christian TV Network. My name is Apostle Larry Doc. You know, I'm del delighted to be coming your way right now. Shall we pray? Father God, you are awesome, you are great, you are mighty. We worship you and we honor you right now. Thank you for the opportunity to declare your word. I pray that it shall minister life, power, victory to all our hearers. We give you glory, praise and thanks in Jesus' name. Amen and Amen. Thank you for joining me and welcome once again to this telecast on Majestic Christian TV Network. I want to bring a very uh, short word uh, from um, the book of Numbers, Numbers chapter 16. I'm going to be looking at the six, chapter 16 and 17 together. Uh, my main interest is in chapter 17, but uh, the background story is in uh, chapter 16. I trust that the Lord is good, has been good to you and that He is still being gracious to you. My prayer is that as you listen to His word, He will bless you all even more in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. My topic today is that the Lord will speak for you. The Lord will speak for you. It is just to encourage you out there and for you to know that regardless of what you are going through, what you are facing, God will speak for you. Why? Because the Lord loves you and the Lord has you on His mind. Hallelujah. Now, the story I want to share with us this hour is taken from Numbers chapter 16 and it's as follows that um, uh, one young man called Korah, uh, one, of the, uh, one of the Levitical uh, young men from the tribe of Levi, so to speak, uh, in collaboration with uh, two other guys called Dathan and Abiram, these were uh, Reubenites. Uh, so they stood up against uh, Moses and, and uh, Aaron, the high priest, and they felt that uh, uh, Moses and Aaron didn't have the right or the authority to, to lead them and to, 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 to be their spokespersons, so to speak. And so they felt that they also had the qualification to hear from God and to listen to God and also to lead the people. You know, sometimes people get to a place where uh, they can despise you, they can look down on you because they think that maybe they are better educated or equally educated, uh, educated as yourself. Uh, they sometimes feel they are older than you or they have a better background, they are wealthier or whatever. What they, they may have their own reasons for wanting to be very disrespectful towards you or uh, they may want to, you know, look down on you. You see, but here is the, is the fact. When God has called you and God has raised you, uh, He will speak for you. He will stand up against your opponents. Now, the story goes that these three young men, they had managed to influence 250 top leaders, not just ordinary people, but leaders, princes they were called. 250 from the Israeli, um, you know, camp or among, from among the population. And they mobilized and they influenced 250 elite princes or leaders. And they managed to induce them with their rebelliousness. To revolt against the leadership of Moses. It's a pity how people sometimes don't realize that leadership is of God. It is God who raises, it is God who breaks down. And so when people rise up against leadership, when God has not ordained it, it will fail. It will come to nothing. Hallelujah. See, sometimes you may be following a leader who you know, in many respects, may not be uh, up to maybe your own estimation, or in, in your in your eyes, you may feel they are lesser of a lesser background or, of, or, or an inferior background or whatever you, you know. But the thing is this: 
I've noticed one thing. When God raises up a person, God will always speak for the person. God will stand up for the person. Are you hearing me? Are you hearing me? So, these three young men, they, they stirred up dissension, dissension in the cup. And the whole thing upset the Lord. But let me just read a little bit so we can follow the story. So, they came with the 250 people. Uh, and, and they... Uh, they set up rebellion against Moses and Aaron. Now, what happened? The Bible says in verse 4 of Numbers chapter 6, When Moses heard this, he fell down, face down. Then he said to Korah and his followers, In the morning the Lord will show who belongs to him, who is holy, and he will have that person come near him. The man who, to, who he chooses, uh, he will cause to come near. You, Korah, and all your followers are to do this. Take your censors, and tomorrow put fire and incense in them before the Lord. The man the Lord chooses will be the one who is holy. You Levites have gone too far. Sometimes when there is infighting and competition, people also feel they have a point. You know, they must be heard, they must be seen. You know, the thing about leadership it's not about what you feel or what you think about yourself or another person for that matter. It is God who raises. It is God who elevates. It is also God who brings down. Hallelujah. So whenever you find yourself fighting against the leadership of God, then know ye that you are getting into trouble. Know ye that you are about to hit your feet feet or your foot against the rock you are about to have a confrontation with almighty god and so moses said well you guys think you are something and you think you are also holy and therefore you can get up and do what you want in the lord's presence well the lord will show you who is holy and who he he has invited or he gives the permission to come to him so they invited to all those 250 leaders uh to bring their senses and put fire in them and to appear before before the Lord. Hallelujah. Now, to cut a long story short, they did as Moses commanded and they appeared um, before the Lord and the Lord commanded that all those who were near them should move away because God was going to break out against them. And the Bible says that the Lord caused the earth to open and those people, in fact, um, one of the guys, Korah, he actually refused. He snubbed the invitation Moses gave them. He didn't want to show up. But for all the others, the other three and the 250 of them, the Bible says that the Lord, uh, the Lord told the people to move away from their house, from their tents, from wherever, from their family, because God was going to break out on them, against them. And what happened? The Bible says the earth opened. And they were swallowed up alive. They were swallowed up what? Alive. That was God's judgment upon the people. Now, God wanted to deal with the contention and the infighting that, had, that was simmering in the hearts of the people. And, and, and sometimes people feel, you know, sometimes, you see, when you are following a leader who is led of God, you may not and you will not always understand what God is doing and how God is leading the people. If you follow the story of Moses carefully, you will realize that Moses many times didn't know what God was going to do next until the crisis reached a point when he will ask God what to do and then the Lord will intervene, the Lord will show him what to do. See, sometimes leaders who have been appointed by God, they may be weak and feeble, they may not know everything, but God is with them. And when you touch them, God will fight for them. Hallelujah. You see, it is by faith we follow God. It is, it is by faith we serve God. The fact that we are yielded to Him, that alone speaks a lot. God does not underestimate that sacrifice. Hallelujah. That's why you can have doctors and lawyers, and pharmacists and engineers who are following a pastor or a leader who may not be so highly educated. You see, it is God who calls, it is God who ordains, it is God who anoints. So your pastor may not be as intellectual, as educated as yourself, but once God has called him, 
God has called him. And if you stand up against him, if you think you can preach better than him, or you can speak better English than him, or hey, you may find out that the Lord will oppose you. So these young people lost their lives suddenly because they, they stood up against the authority with God and established over the people. Now hear me very clearly. If you are in a church and you are in a church organization, remember, the church is the body of Christ. You have to be very careful, especially when some people who like to lead rebellion and they like to revolt against church authority. Remember that whenever you start that, you are actually, uh, uh, you are actually touching on a sensitive, sensitive nerve of God. And, you will, and God may want to bring judgment upon you or against you. So, be advised never, never to take, you know, the issue of the church authority into your hands to want to confront and to want to, uh, you know, uh, get ahead of them or to overthrow them or what have you. The Lord will not take kindly to that. And so that was how the Lord dealt with that. But after the Lord judged um, those 250 people, the people of Israel were very angry with Moses and Aaron. Still, they were upset. And then the Lord decided to speak again. And we see that in chapter 17. I'm trying to give you an overview of um, the details of what happened uh, leading up to this now. So in chapter 17, this is where the Lord now speaks to Moses again. It says, speak to the Israelites and the twelve staffs and get twelve staffs from them, one from the leader of each of the ancestral tribes, write the name of each man on his um, staff. On the staff of Levi, write Aaron's name, for there must be one staff for the head of each ancestral tribe. So remember there were twelve tribes uh, in Israel, and each of these tribes was to be represented by a staff belonging to that tribe. So again, the staff is a symbol or stands for leadership of a tribe. Hallelujah. And so God represents and God uh, 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 symbolizes leadership by a rod or a staff. And so for all the 12 tribes, they were supposed to bring their rod and to present it and to give it to Moses, and everyone, every tribe must have their name written upon it, and they were to present it before the Lord. Now here the Lord was going to distinguish and uh, between who he had called to be a leader, and the Lord was going to speak. I declare unto you that if you are having people contend with you on your job, a job God has given to you, if you are having church members contending with you, of a leadership into which God has called you. If you're having even children, sons and daughters you bore from your own loins and womb, having them content with you, remember that God will speak for you. Hallelujah. Amen. And so, when these people began to contest with the leadership of Moses and Aaron, the Lord didn't like it because it was the Lord who had appointed them. So whatever God has given to you that people are wanting to con contest with and want to give you hassle over, I want you to hold your peace. God himself will speak. God himself will declare judgment over the enemy. Say, I hear you. And so they all were commanded to bring their rods and they brought them and Moses took them. Everybody, the, the name of each tribe had been written on the rods and they were presented before uh, the Lord in the tabernacle. The next day, they went to um, Moses went in there and saw all the rods in the uh, in, before the ark of the Lord. And the Bible says that the rod of every one of the elders or leaders of Israel remained the same, dry wood dry, you know, powerless, lifeless wood. But the rod of Aaron had changed. The Bible says the rod of Aaron 
had now budded, had blossomed, and had almond fruit on them. Hallelujah. Amen. You see, God will go to any length to prove to those who are contesting with you, those who are fighting you, those who are criticizing you, those who want to bring you down. He says, we will show you that we are somebody also. If God has called you and raised you, be it in your job or in your ministry or in, in whatever you are doing, your profession, if God has called you and God has made a way for you and anyone has risen up against you, let me tell you, God himself is, will be the one who will silence them. He will shut them up. He will quieten them in Jesus' name. I declare unto you, wherever you are having these sort of issues in your life, especially in these days when people are so ambitious that they even want to climb on peop other people to reach their goals. Let me tell you something. If the Lord has positioned you, no man can unseat you. No man can dethrone you. No man can expel you. No man can kick you out. Hallelujah. Amen. Maybe you are in a marriage and some young ladies are contesting with you and they are trying to, you know, outwit you and take over your marriage. Let me tell you, if God has placed you in that marriage, He will speak for you. He will make sure that these people who are tormenting your life, they will be silenced perpetually. Say, I hear you. God will speak for you. The Lord who has begun that good work in your life, He will speak for you in Jesus' name. Amen. I'm here to encourage you to let you know that there are times in your life when you don't have what it takes to deal with the magnitude of challenges and the problems that may be against you. You may not have what it takes. And you're wondering how you're going to deal with this horde of people and, and enemies all over you, flanking you left and right. But let me tell you, if God has brought you where you are, if you are a faithful child of God, if you are a believer in the Lord Jesus, He will fight for you. He will speak for you. Say, I hear you. I speak to you right now. Just like the Lord spoke and He silenced the enemies of those He has called, Moses and Aaron. And don't, I just don't want you to think of Aaron and Moses as, so, as superhuman beings. They were human beings like you and I. But the difference is that God called them. Just like God may have called you and put you into whatever you are doing. I want you to know that if God has placed you there, He will defend you. He will speak for you. Against all accusers, against all liars, and whoever is hatching up wickedness against you. Receive your deliverance right now. Receive your the supernatural defense right now. Let the Lord speak for you and declare your enemies banned for life. Hallelujah. May He put them to shame and may He cause you to have laughter in your mouth. In the name of Jesus Christ. I pray for you right now that the Lord will visit you wherever you are aching, wherever you are having hassles and, and you are having frustrations. Let the Jehovah God, the one who spoke for Aaron and Moses, let him also speak for you. I declare your freedom. I declare your deliverance. I declare your release for every torment and oppression of wicked people. Amen. Receive that right now in Jesus' name. I just want to leave this, with, with, this verse with you. I pray your week will be very blessed and that you will call and give a testimony that the Lord has in this spoken and forth for you. The Lord bless you richly and I will be coming your way again sometime next week. And have a wonderful, wonderful week. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.